This is Spencer with the MacGuffin today. I'm joined by some of the, I guess, real life figures slash authors slash uh, technical <laughs> consultants behind the movie 13 Hours. Uh, we got Mark Geist, is that right? Uh, John Tigan. Yep. And uh, Chris Peranto. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Close well, enough you. that I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, which is the story behind the Benghazi sure. um, attack in 2012, I believe it was? Yes, it was. Yes. Um, my first question is sort of a practical one. Like, why tell this story? Not, not in the sense that, like, the story doesn't deserve to be told, but, like, it's going to be controversial. You know, people are going to be coming at you from all angles. Like, why even deal with it? Or was it something you just had to deal with anyway and you might as well tell the story from your perspective? Biggest reason is uh, because, I mean, it's not something that we really wanted to do because our lives were always private. Um, but when you see a story about your your life or more importantly, the lives of four Americans that were killed get um, bastardized or get spun for politics. Um, it's really disheartening. I mean, we had four Americans that gave their lives for this country and somebody, both sides of the aisle, want to take it and spin it to use it for whatever their benefit is instead of honoring the Americans that, I mean, the service that they gave um, and the lies that were being told. I mean, about the ambassador being um, mutilated or molested or all of that, it didn't happen. And out of respect for the family members, um, you know, though some of the stuff that we talked to them about was painful, um, they should know the truth. And I think the American people should know the truth. That there's people out there serving their country um, in the shadows that they're not the soldiers that everybody talks about. You got an ambassador, um, you know, Sean Smith, an information officer, um, Ty and Glenn. And you want to take that and turn it into something for your own personal gain instead of being honest and having the courage to tell the truth and... Uh, you know, it just it really pained. I mean, it angered me. I think it did all of us. Yeah, it, it did. When when you're pushed, you keep getting pushed. We we kept working. We kept working. Oz was hurt seriously or injured, so he was hospitalized. But the rest of us kept deploying overseas after Benghazi. We had no intention of doing a book or any of this happening. And as the the politics took control of the story, and they kept. Um, this funny guy, <laughs> <laughs> and they kept they kept spinning it. They kept turning it into a agenda for and against certain political parties, and you know, and, and when they misrepresented it, you, you can only push seals and marines and rangers so far until it's like you know what, you guys, you're 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 dishonoring the guys that died. You're dishonoring the actual courage that took place on the ground. You're using it for your political gain. You know, fine. We're done. Let, let's. We're gonna. We're gonna tell the truth. Did that carry over to the acquisition of the film and the film production as well? Because I would say Hollywood has a you know yeah. suspect track record in yeah, adapting yeah. movies yeah, yeah. to be true stories. That was that something that you really wanted to heavily negotiate when you got involved with the movie? Is that you would be involved in the actual production of it just to ensure the authenticity? We knew we were gonna lose creative control of it when the movie. Um, now, we fell in, we got very lucky falling into Three Arts Entertainment. Our literary agent was Three Arts, Richard Abate. He's the one that helped us with the book. The book was excellent. We got a great author, Mitchell Zukoff, who's won awards for integrity, for journalistic integrity. He wanted the black and white view. He, he did the true journalist uh, journalist aspect of writing the book. He actually did just the, fa just the facts. No spin, just the facts. And he did a great job getting that down. Three Arts, though, um, also represented Chuck Hogan who was a screenwriter who did a very good job writing the town and, and strain as well. And then also Erwin Stoff, who is the movie producer, he owns three arts as well. And he kind of earned our trust. And, and we did ask for, we did say, Hey, we need to be involved with this because we don't want you to turn this into a Hollywood type movie. And the, the examples they gave us as far as in the beginning, being involved with the script to the set design, to actually being on set, to meeting Michael Bay initially when he wanted to come on and and, uh, and sh them showing the respect that they did want to listen to what we had to say. And then the actors getting to know us very well, not just the tactics, but getting to know us personally. Um, they, they earned our trust. But yeah, we were, we were very apprehensive at the beginning because we didn't want to turn into a Hollywood movie. It's, it's very easy to like mm -hmm. turn that into its own creature of itself. Um, in terms of the film itself, um, 
are you guys big movie watchers? Like, what what is your sort of perspective going into this from in terms of like military movies? Like, you talk about being involved in like make, making sure things are tactically accurate and right. stuff like that. Is that one of those things that you're in a movie watching? You're just like, this is absurd. Like, why why are you guys doing this? This makes no logical sense. And you want like how how did that sort of come into play with you guys in terms of making this movie? I mean, you want to make sure you get the you know the tactical portion of it of it correct, but. You know, tactics are tactics, you know. Um, <clears throat> our biggest thing, you know, we don't want a lot of stuff that we do to go out into the public because then it just, you know, endangers the guys that we work with. So, um, you know, we were really careful in the book not to put anything that was going to endanger them. And But, you know, unfortunately they did have the SEALs train them. Um, so we had to go <laughs> back. We had to, we had, we had to fix a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they did a good job. And, uh, you know, the, the actors, they'd ask us, you know, about, you know, how they'd carry the guns when we got on set. You know, how would you transition, you know, this and that? How would you deal with, you know, a couple of weapon systems transferring and they'd bounce back? Well, sometimes you just got to deal with that kind of stuff. It does happen. So, but, you know, Hollywood, they do... If it doesn't, even though it's something that's supposed to be how you would do it, if it doesn't really look good on camera, they're going to make it to where they're going to have to do what they have to do to sure. make it look good on camera. But th they did have the respect that the actors did, that they would come to us. And they, even though they would get trained, you know, they went through a boot camp with Harry Humphreys and all that, but they would come to us and they would say, okay, we got this. How would you do it? So it wasn't just the tactics looks right. It's how, how would Tano do this tactic, not how the tactic's done by going through a boot training a, a boot camp and that was that again another way of their earning respect to us and we, us knowing and having a couple feeling that they were wanted to get the movie right not just tactically right but get it down is how we would do things there so when we're seeing it in the movies like yeah that's that's Oz that's that's Tig that's Tom is that surreal at all though like to have somebody else representing you in a story that you lived playing out in front of you on the screen like is there an element of just like surrealness that is like this is my life like was that albert brooks movie yeah. like from the 80s like this is your life sort of like you're reliving these moments in your life and you're like oh, that was tough or maybe you think i wish i would have done this differently something like that is that is that a weird thing to do? i don't think it, i mean i don't think it's really set in for that um you know it's kind of and i think as it goes because right now i'm just looking at when i look at the movie or and going through on set and doing all that i'm looking at it as okay what can we do i'm approaching it just like anything else i've done is how can we do this the best and how can my input help them and let's do it and make the best movie that we can that tells the story how we want it to be you know the spirit of the book um so I don't think it's really set in yet. I think that um, probably second or third time I watch it, I'll probably sit back or when I watch uh, other people watch it is when I'll probably realize that, um, wow, this is about me. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, 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 it's the actors got to know us very well. So it's, it's, I'm actually pretty comfortable with it. If it was somebody that I didn't know or just was playing me up on the screen and had no contact with me and all was just going up there and, then it would probably be not even surreal. It just wouldn't be right. But they had us involved, so it was. It was. It, it's going to be a great experience. So, all of this—the book, the movie, everything—what is it that you most are hoping people take away from it? Are you hoping that they learn the the story about these individuals, learn the truth behind this event? Like, what what is it that you hope someone who's like see, either sees this movie or picks up the book takes away that they can sort of bring into their life i guess uh, for me it's mainly just to uh, bring the honor back to the four guys who sacrificed their lives serving our country that weren't truly being honored by everybody else that the higher level weren't doing they were just using their story for their own agenda and you know it's just that's that's what i would like them to take away just their sacrifices that they gave that night the, the positiveness of that night the sacrifice that people are willing to make for each other is the human spirit that when that's still out there when 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 people are in trouble americans or not americans when people need help there are those out there that still will go out there and sacrifice themselves to to save lives and uh also i, I just want people to walk out of there knowing that when every obstacle comes up you can you can overcome it we could have given up so many times that, yeah, and we and right. we didn't 
And uh, we're not any different than anybody else. We're, we're just people. We're just normal people. I don't people. know. You guys are pretty bad. We did some things that may have looked. But we just, you know, I won't be able to walk out with the positive feeling. Not sure. Benghazi has a, has a, a connotation Tough of being connotation, negative. Yeah. It's not. It, there's a lot of great things that took place in it. The heroism and the courage and, and just that the people can overcome adversity. Um, and along those lines, same for me. I mean, the honor to the four Americans, um, the courage and everything that everybody did there. But as well as that, you know, there's uh, since 2001, there's been between 3,500 and 5,000 contractors killed in 80 in 80 different countries. Wow. Um, and this is a way to bring for me that I hope people realize that, you know, there's foreign service officers, ambassadors, case officers, contractors all over the world helping our country be what it is and serving and putting their lives on the line, being separated from their families over the holiday seasons. I mean, all the time. And I just hope it brings recognition to them as a larger group that, you know, there's a lot of Americans out there sacrificing for us to have what we have here. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. powerful. Well, thank you guys so much for doing this interview and uh, working on the movie. And uh, thank you for your service as well. And I wish you the yep. best. Of thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.